We are out in the garden getting some last minute work done. We are in the crunch today because we have to get our garlic planted and our celery harvested. It is the first week in October and we've had one frost so far this year. It was just a mild frost. It was actually on the 28th of last month, I believe. And we're gonna have a hard frost tonight and possibly even snow. So very unusual year and we need to make sure we get some things done before then. I'm working on prepping this row for our garlic. This is definitely a glorious day, but it is a little bit sad because Eric and I have come to the conclusion that we will not be gardening next year. So we are not going to have a garden. We're just gonna be planting our garlic. That will be for next year because it overwinters, but everything else we're not gonna be doing. So it's kind of a little bit a little bit sad in here. Usually we come through at the end of the year and we chop everything down, you know, harvest what we want, we compost the rest, feed the chickens and we get the rows ready for next year. But since we don't need to do that this year, we are going to be letting our chickens come into the garden and enjoy some of the bugs in the soil. We've got a lot of work to do on this row, so Eric and I are gonna get started. temperatures it's like uh still growing you know it's really cold out here cold yeah my hands are cold ah uh, yeah but it's cold but it's not it's not frozen also getting our solar powered fence charger taken down and this thing has been great we've had it for four years we use a little tiny like lawnmower battery this is four years old and it works awesome we have this little tiny 10 watt solar panel and a lot of this uh we use the plastic or poly uh electrical wire so we're taking her down for the year you first nothing you can do about it this is the last call for anything that can't tolerate hard frost so below 28 degrees fahrenheit we picked a lettuce i found a little lettuce we had in there and i'm also picking flowers that we have in here for tea because those also will not tolerate the cold coming in overall this has been another great year in the garden it's our fourth year that we had a, a beautiful garden and i really attribute a lot of that to the amazing soil that we have right here in front of me it's been awesome and truly rewarding to work on this garden here while we have had it. But Eric and I have definitely decided that because next year we are going to be developing a different property that is much further away than our current area, we do not have the time and the energy to put into starting seeds, to growing them, taking care of them and harvesting them. So in the future, we will have another garden, but it just won't be this one. Our row is ready to plant our garlic. Eric and I have been ordering fillery garlic for about three years now. I really like that company and I really like the garlic that they send. You can see it's just a gorgeous garlic bulb. If you've never planted garlic, I highly recommend it. 
It is definitely probably one of Eric's favorite crops to grow and it's probably one of my top three. It's definitely underrated and overlooked because of how simple it is to grow and how flavorful it is when you grow your own garlic compared to what you can find at the grocery store. The varieties that we grow up here in Alaska are hard neck garlic so they tend to have a bigger clove in there and you'll usually get less cloves as a whole per bulb. I think this one has seven. Generally what you find in stores is soft neck garlic and soft neck garlic is just an entirely different type of garlic. It wouldn't overwinter well here. I've never tried to grow it personally. This is what we stick to. There's a few varieties over the years that have proven to be champions. Music is one of them. There's German white or German extra hardy. And then Polish hardneck is another variety that does okay. But in all honesty, music is just my favorite. If you've never planted it, it's really simple to plant it. We're going to show you how we, how we do our process here today. It's a crop that is overwintered. So we plant it in the fall and then it overwinters. And then in the spring it grows and we harvest it in the summer. The exact timing when you want to plant it really just depends on where you're at. When we lived in Oregon, we would plant it a little bit later. Here, we plant it a little bit earlier. So generally around mid-September to late September, I'm kind of keeping an eye on the temperatures to see when it is a good time to plant them. And what we're looking for is our first frost. We want to kind of time it right around then, but also when we think that the ground's going to completely freeze. So it's a little bit hard to actually know when exactly to plant it. I know the first year we planted it, it was a little bit late. It was mid-October. This year it is also getting close to mid-October, but that is because we have had a late frost. So things are definitely starting to trend downwards now and we're going to get this planted just in time. A good rule for Eric and I up here is to wait until our first frost or about four weeks until our ground actually completely freezes. It's getting late in the evening and we still have a little more to do. Let's get this garlic planted. This is why it is called hardnecks because it has that hard stem right there and these bulbs are just beautiful. When you're planting garlic, you wanna separate all the individual cloves, but it's really important to keep the paper skin on them. You don't want to uh, take that off and that's just because they can get rot and then not grow. So we don't want that of course. And we're gonna be planting ours about four to six inches deep. Sometimes you plant them a little bit shallower if you are not in as extreme of a climate. And it's fairly simple. You just want the tip up and the bottom down or where the roots would grow. And I just space them a few inches apart from each other. I don't know exactly how many inches apart, maybe like five or so. So I'm gonna do about four in one row. Grab this little trowel here, this is, or a handle, <laughs> but this is helpful. Okay. This is really good looking garlic. It has those really pretty like purple streaks on it. That's certain hard neck varieties have that. And I'm gonna have Eric jump in here and help me because these bulbs are a little bit tricky to break open and we have a lot to plant. This is all music. Oh my gosh, I'm just like not used to the cold. <laughs> freezing out here. It says 28 tonight. It's probably 28 right now. I think it, well yeah, I think our high is only like in the 30s. <laughs> it's really nice over here. I think we did five last time, but I'm doing four in this row. We didn't really lose any last year, but the closer you put into the edge, you risk. I think that's what happened when it was bare soil. If I pulled the plant out already, you know, like a lettuce or something around right here. Oh. It may have gotten kind of damp and wet. And... Perfect. Is it too close on the edge here? Here, you know what? Just do three right here. What's your favorite reason to grow garlic? My favorite reason for growing garlic is the ease. So Ariel starts a lot of seeds in our little cabin and it gets rough having all that soil and all the trays in there and taking up all the room. Garlic's awesome because you take your bulb, you plant it out here, over winters, it grows. And then also another cool thing about garlic is you can store it for a really long time. You don't have to can it or anything. You just cure it outside and you got garlic for the rest of the year. Plus, who doesn't like garlic, right? That's another nice one here. Vampires. Oh, Vampire yeah.
Right, thanks to Eric's help, we got this all planted and I am just hitting it with some bone meal. This is cod fish meal, I believe, and it is phosphorus. So it is good for garlic because garlic is a bulbing plant. Garlic, in my experience, does require quite a bit of compost and fertilizer. I'm also going to put a little bit of an all-purpose fertilizer and then in the spring and the summer months when it's growing, you really want to put a lot of nitrogen on it when it's first starting to sprout. We're killing two birds with one stone out here in the chicken coop. We're cleaning out the coop and we're going to be bringing this over to the garlic row. We're going to be fertilizing with the chicken poop and the straw and also using it as a thick layer of mulch. Feathers and the... I'm after the manure. Look at that big feather right there. There's some ton of feathers in there. All they're all molten, you know. Yeah, they're molten. Get the edges good too. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was gonna really lay on thick when we come through with the other stuff. You know what I mean? If it's the other stuff that we put in the front, I don't mind leaving that in there. Everything's gonna die tonight. <laughs> Sorry, I just meant say goodbye to all those beautiful green leaves out there. I'm out. I don't know if you're gonna use this whole thing. Okay, well if you open it and you want to use some of the chicken coop, or just put, I have a, I have a bag right here. We could oh my gosh, this thing is gonna compressed. That's what I was thinking. It's gonna oh blow. yeah, it's really compressed. Keep it kind of thin, you know, back there until uh, later in the season, because I keep, I usually keep. Pretty unique name, Russell. You don't meet a lot of Russells. You don't meet a lot of Brussels. <laughs> it's not that common of a name anymore. Well, we got this done just in the nick of time. We are losing daylight quickly at this time of the year. Eric went through and put some soil over each individual clove. We then added the chicken litter and then we added a bunch of straw on top. We mulch pretty seriously up here. So we need a lot of mulch to protect our garlic through the winter because our winters are so long and cold and the ground freezes so hard. The garden miraculously does freeze and then it comes back to life or goes dormant, shall I say. It comes back to life in the spring and you will get a plant from each little clove. Where you're at, you may not need to mulch that much. And in fact, depending on where you are in the world where you're planting garlic, sometimes your garlic will actually sprout in the winter and grow in the winter months. I know that was the case back in Oregon for us, but here it's gonna stay dormant until the spring. Eric and I have to get our celery and Swiss chard harvested tonight because it is going to get very cold and both of those are not gonna tolerate the frost that we're gonna get. Oh my gosh. Do you feel the crunch? Oh, wow. I don't know, how, it must be getting really cold or something. Cause it is getting cold. I'd, I'd be curious to see what temperature is outside. It's, we gotta set up a temperature gauge out here again. It has to be 36. <laughs> oh my gosh, look at this one. That's a behemoth. Okay. Ooh, broken backs and cold hands. We're gonna call it quits for the night. Did a lot of good work out here today.
This is perfect. I'm, I'm just like right at man too. Over. Do you want to do the middle? That's going to be good like that on that corner. We're back in the garden. It's been about a week and a half since Eric and I have planted our garlic and we just now got it tarped up and covered for the winter. We did not usually throw a tarp on this, but I'm doing it this year for two reasons. One, I have the chickens that are gonna be coming in here and I don't want them messing with our garlic. They've been known to do that in the past. My second reasoning is that I don't actually know what's gonna happen with the rest of our garden, but we do know that we have something planted here that is going to be overwintering and growing next year. At this point in the season, we have had another really hard frost and it wasn't just like a hard frost. I'm pretty sure we actually hit about 20 degrees four nights in a row. So it was very, very harsh on the garden. And we actually got a little bit of snow, but we have warmed up again. We are getting a little bit of rain and then we're going to dip back down. And I think this time, once we dip down, we're actually going to be in our winter. So we've got to get a whole bunch of stuff harvested today. I've got greens, Brussels sprouts, rutabagas, and leeks that we have to harvest. <laughs> Frozen. This is a fairly good growing season for us. These are rutabagas and they're huge. They usually do get really big, but this is bigger than we've grown them. Well, we've only grown them one, one year before here. So this is bigger than that year. And I really think it was just the whole warmth we had. It seems like the stuff that was started at that right time just did really well, especially with the second half of the summer being all rain. But if you don't get your timing right, your stuff will not be big like this because I have other seeds that did not get this big. These are those yellow ones. It looks like an eggplant. This is a seed that was sent to us from across the seas and it is so amazing. I cannot pronounce the name of it right now off off the top of my head but it is it's kind of like a turnip slash rutabaga it's really small but it doesn't really taste like a turnip it kind of tastes more like a rutabaga and now that we've had so many frosts these vegetables are actually quite a bit sweeter so this is one of my favorites I wish I could find this seed locally <laughs> Can I borrow them for a second? I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut this kale off. We're stripping off the kale plants here. You can see that kale is really hardy, but it did actually suffer some damage. That's some of that like little bleaching. I don't really know what the exact term would be, but it has suffered just a tiny bit of damage. No big deal. I'm probably gonna give that piece to the chickens. But these plants, surprisingly, they just don't tolerate our cold temperatures that well. We only had those few days of that frost and although they're doing good now, I can predict after probably a few more frosts, they're not gonna look good. One time we tried leaving them out here and it just, it didn't work out that well. And as far as preserving them, you can can these. We've tried it, they weren't our favorite that way. We prefer them most frozen and then we'll just chop them up when we're making a meal in the winter. The other way that a lot of people do it is you can like slice them thin and you can air dry them or just throw them in a dehydrator and they're pretty good like that too. They dry up and you crumble them into meals. I think I'm gonna give the tops to the chickens. Okay, leeks are done. 
These are all actually gonna get canned this year. We're gonna be canning these tomorrow. And I think the last thing for today is our parsnips. Are you saving ones this small? Yeah, I'll just cut off the bulbs, the top part. Yeah, it calls, I, I mean, it calls for parsnips. Well, I think it does. That's it. All we have to do is harvest our potatoes in a few days. We're waiting on that. I've got to get all of this cleaned and processed and prepared for tomorrow. We are going to be starting with canning some cream of celery soup. Very excited about that. We're out here in our outdoor kitchen and we are getting started on our cream of celery soup this morning. We've got all our ingredients chopped up. This is a recipe that I got from my neighbor. We're going to be quadrupling it and we are also going to be subbing some of the ingredients. So the main ingredient is definitely celery and we have a lot of that. We chopped that up last night and cleaned it up. Same thing with our leeks. Those also carry a lot of dirt on those so they're chopped up and we rinse them. And these are substitutions for onions. We're gonna have parsnips in this recipe, but you can also use carrots. I have those peeled and sliced. And then we're also adding some kale. And this is one of our favorite kales. This is Italian or dinosaur kale. It has a few different names and it's delicious. I pulled the ribs out and then I just chopped it up finely. We've got some herbs and we've also got some garlic going in this. And we have a whole bunch of other ingredients too. I'm gonna to get this chopped up and sauteing in some butter. We're adding about a cup of olive oil to begin with in this pot. And then we're gonna be doing two sticks of butter. This is unsalted butter. And then our garlic's going in. I don't know how many heads this is. That's a lot. It's, I'd say close to probably like 10, 10 heads of garlic. I think the recipe calls for powder, so you can definitely use that too. We're just gonna lightly saute all of that. And for herbs, we have parsley, oregano, I think I had some winter savory, and thyme. I had a bunch of thyme. That's like the last I scrounged from the garden. And we're also going to be adding pretty much all of our other ingredients right now, except the kale. So the celery is just going in right on top of that. The recipe calls for about four bundles of celery, but grocery store celery is much bigger and it's just bigger and better all around. So ours is a little bit smaller. Got a lot of celery in there. We're gonna to top this off with just a little bit of water. Looks like that's ice water. And I'm probably using about four cups altogether. I'm really looking forward to this soup. I got to try my neighbors and it was delicious, but Eric and I are much fonder over fresh vegetables and celery leeks and parsnips actually store great if you have a root cellar or somewhere damp, dark, and cold to store them. They store for a few months, which is pretty amazing, but this is, I guess, the next best thing for us. We're not as big of a fan of freezing this stuff. I feel like it just kind of gets an off flavor once it's sat in the freezer for a while. And parsnips, if you've never tried them, I do recommend them. They have an awesome flavor, especially once they've been through a winter, they get just a different, like softer, sweeter flavor. They are really long growing crops. So you, once you start them in seed in the spring, it's best if you can even let them go a little bit through the winter and you can even harvest them the next spring. Unfortunately, our winters are just a little too harsh for that. So we had to grab them now. We're gonna put a lid on this and let this sit for probably about 10 minutes. Our vegetables are cooked down. It took a little while. Some of them were frozen, so it took about 25 minutes to heat this up. I'm now going to add our chicken stock. Eric and I took down two older hens the other day and made some fresh chicken stock that we're adding to this and it turned out awesome. You can definitely use a box of chicken stock and vegetable stock. The recipe calls for three to four, so we are quadrupling that. And ours is so cool. So there's like a layer of fat on there because it's cooled. And then this time around, it turned out jelly. So sometimes if you let bone broth or chicken stock go for a really long time, you will actually get gelatinous results at the end when it cools down. And that's because all the collagen has broken down, dissolved and went into the broth itself. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's like a jiggly soup here. You got fat on top 
and then that clear stuff or translucent stuff is the stock. So I'm gonna pour that in. I was tempted to add more butter and olive oil to this, but I know that the chicken stock we're adding has a lot of fat. So that's gonna add a lot of fat and oils and flavor back into this. The trick to getting your stock like that is low and slow and letting it go for a really long time. The other day we made it and the pressure can batch did not turn out like that, but the one that we did similar to this manner did do that. So you gotta let it go for a really long time. We're now gonna add our seasonings and salt and pepper. We'll do quite a bit because this is a big batch of soup. And this is Herbs de Provence. Actually, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it has lavender in it, which is really awesome because I cannot grow lavender. You can see the little buds in there. Kale's going in. We're gonna let this simmer for another 10 minutes and then we will be adding our dairy. The measurements of the dairy that we're adding are a little bit variable in this recipe. So this is a mixture of heavy whipping cream and whole milk and then I've also added some arrowroot powder. The arrowroot powder we whisked in and that is similar to cornstarch. It's gonna be like the stabilizer for this soup and also gonna help to thicken it up. I pre-mixed it because we don't want the little clumps in the soup and we're gonna pour this in slowly. I also have another batch just behind me. This calls for a lot of dairy. What we're gonna be adding is eight cups of the whole milk. We are adding 16 cups of the heavy whipping cream and then I think I'm starting with three cups of arrowroot powder and we can also add a little bit more if we want it thicker. We're just gonna slowly add this and then kind of give it a good stir. Maybe hard to believe, but this recipe called for more, almost double the amount of heavy whipping cream, but I felt like this was a really good amount for a taken off point, so. We're gonna wanna keep stirring this until it thickens. And then at that point, I'm gonna turn off the heat and we're going to be immersion blending some of it. Well, that looks fantastic. Um, it's really, really good soup. I wanna say it's one of the best soups we've made, probably because of all that flavor in there. But I left a little bit of chunks in there. We want ours to have a little bit of the remnants of the vegetables. You can definitely blend it to whatever consistency you want. And it's, it's thick, it's perfect, it is ready to be canned. So we're gonna get this transferred over and put into some jars. We ended up with 20 jars. This stuff looks amazing. In the past, Eric and I have not done like a dairy soup, mainly because I was afraid it would curdle, the milk would curdle when you process it. But my neighbor's was so delicious and I did a little bit of online research and the arrowroot powder is supposed to help us with that. So I feel safe doing this one since I found it online as well. We're gonna be processing these for 45 minutes in a pressure canner at 11 pounds. We're leaving about a half inch headspace and we're gonna get these cleaned up and into the canner. We got these done just in time before winter. Canning season is slowly coming to an end for us. We were both looking forward to eating this with some fish or maybe like in a pot pie. It was really, really good as is. We've got the last batch going in the pressure canner. This was a new recipe for us. It's slightly different than other soups we've done in the past. Again, it was our first one with dairy. So I will link the video 
that has the same recipe that I followed, although we did substitute several ingredients. I will link that for you in the description. I have to bring these in for the night because it's just getting way too cold out here and I don't want these to accidentally freeze. You can see that they have separated just a little bit, but that is totally common with a chunkier or more dense soup and you can just shake it up or you know when you pour it out when you're reheating it that'll be fine last thing we have to do in our garden is harvest our potatoes we have to get that done very quickly because winter is is coming fast so we will see you in that video it's not going to be today <laughs>